Does your Shih Tzu or Shih Tzu mix need a new look? A little doggy makeover? Thanks for joining me today, guys. I am Amy Lee, certified professional pet groomer since 2003. But more importantly, I am your go-to groomer on the web. Today, I'm going to walk you through, step by step, the new look I like to place on Shih Tzus and Shih Tzu mixes. We're going to take this little beauty from this to this. Before I groom any dog, I always evaluate the dog's resemblance, their profile, and coat type. What does that mean? Well, I'm going to share that with you today, guys. That's what we do. We share. We share things. We like to share things. <laughs> so stay put. Don't go anywhere. Let's roll it. I am certified pet professional Amy Lee. The only difference between you and your groomer is knowledge, techniques, and tools. It is absolutely my pleasure to share with you the secrets of the grooming industry. I will give you the knowledge, teach you the techniques, and show you the tips and products that will only produce winning results. So stay put as we get started on this journey together today. I will guide you to success in brushing, de-shedding, and de-matting your doll. Subscribers of this channel will have access to the industry secrets from live demos to exclusive house calls together we will increase the bond you share with your pets and add even more value to their lives so guys this is coco she is a shih tzu mix i'm just getting her up on the table right now so what i need to do is brush her out thoroughly then i will wash her and dry her and she'll be ready for trimming as with any dog that i groom i assess the groom first so she's up on the table we're taking a look at her okay first i gotta think about okay what kind of breed is this she's a shih tzu mix i gotta think about what she resembles does she resemble a shih tzu does she resemble a poodle or a maltese because that's what type of groom i'm going to incorporate into her new look so when evaluating coco i can clearly see that she resembles a shih tzu i'm looking at her profile right now her breed characteristics what stands out to me she has a pushed in nose like a shih tzu she has a round head like a shih tzu and she definitely has a shih tzu coat type so shih tzu it is we're gonna groom her like a shih tzu we're going to incorporate shih tzu grooming characteristics into her trim because she resembles one so when assessing a dog on the grooming table before I groom them I'm looking at do they have a boxy head like a terrier or do they have a round head like a Bichon or a, or a shih tzu you can't can't put a poodle trim on a Maltese. You you can't put a Schnauzer trim on a Bichon. I don't care what anybody says. Don't ever do that. You have to work with what the dog's giving you. You have to work with what they got going on for them already. We've brushed Coco out before the bath. We've removed all the dead hair, and she's ready for the tub. We want this coat to be as clean as possible so we can put the best groom on this dog as we can. Applying the Tropiclean facial scrub here, we are going to remove all the stains, dirt, debris from her eyes, mouth, her face area. This coat's going to be squeaky clean. Now remember, this product is really safe for them around their eyes and their nose and their mouth and everything. It's In fact, they usually try to eat it. But it's a very safe, all-natural product. So I, I recommend you guys pick up the Tropiclean facial scrub to have at home when you're bathing your dogs. Continuing on, just get them good and clean, as clean as you can. You want to over-rinse before you wash them. You want to thoroughly wash them. And then you want to over-rinse the shampoo off of your dog completely. And the conditioner. It's very important not to leave any buildup in the coat. That's a professional tip right there, guys. You'll be amazed. Now she's out of the tub, back up on a table. It's time to get her completely dried. You have to work with a completely dried dog when you're grooming, guys. Um, we're going to fluff dry this little girl right now. Still concentrating on trying to remove any loose, dead, unwanted hair from the coat before we groom her. We want the coat to be nice and pristine before we start this trim. I always brush dogs when they get out of the tub, when they're wet. Just like we would brushing our own hair after we get out of the shower you can get through it nice and easy as well as we're still actually going to be removing dead hair from the coat in this step now coco is all dry i am just giving her one final little brush through before we start our trim so exciting we're getting ready to start trimming this dog guys <laughs> start at the base of the skull come forward i am using a c wall snap-on comb over a 30 blade. 
So that's what you want to do. Start right there at the base of the skull. Start coming forward right over the visor of their brow. We're just setting the length right now. Determining the length of the hair on her head. We're only going to be focusing on the head today, guys. I'm not going to do a full groom on Coco for you in the tutorial. We're just focusing on the head, on the look. If you like more length on, on the head, you can go longer or you can go shorter if you want it to be tidy for longer, longer period of time, then you would go shorter. So start right here, right, right above her throat, right above her Adam's apple, and come straight up. The rest is gonna be body blading and body trimming. Right there under the back of her ear, right along her jaw, that is all head assembly. That is part of the head. We are working with the head assembly today, guys, giving Coco her new look. Now it's time to pop a 10 blade on. We're going to trim right in the corners of her eyes, right at the stop. We're gonna clean off the earlobes with that 10 blade, and then it's time to start our scissor work. That's the fun stuff. You guys are gonna love that. The reason I clean their earlobes off with a 10 blade like this is just, just venting, venting the ear letting airflow get in there. Now we're cleaning off the area there in front of their eye at the stop. That's where they, they collect a lot of debris. So I like to take that short right in there, right at the corner. You're just doing it in the shape of an inverted V. That's it. We'll scissor all that together in a minute. Now we're gonna take a look at how we're gonna round this head. Give her a round head shape. We'll start by using our comb, pulling that hair forward over her eyes. That's her visor. And we're gonna trim it from the corner of one eye to the corner of the other eye. That's how much we're trimming there at, at her bangs area. It would be her visor. You'll wanna repeat that step a couple times because you wanna make sure that no hair is gonna pop out when she shakes her head and hairs will pop out that you miss. So using the comb, pulling it forward, trimming again the same, same area from corner of eye to corner of eye, creating her visor. I'm gonna snip off these few hairs that are sticking out over her nose. Be careful of that tongue. And then we're just going to angle down the hair from on top of her nose down the side of her muzzle. We're going to just angle that down so that it, it doesn't stick up like it was. Rewind it if you need to. Take a look. But we just were angling that down away from her eyes. Now we're going to be taking a look at the hair above her ears and the side of her cheeks. What are we going to do with that? Well, we're gonna blend it right down in. We're gonna blend the hair on the top of her head right down in to the top of her ear. That would be where the base of her ear is. That's where the ear set is. That's, um, that's an important term, ear set. We wanna set where the ear either really truly is or where we want it to appear to be. Now we're gonna round that cheek in. We're gonna tie the cheek in. We wanna leave a little bit of bulk there because that's the largest area of our circle, the circumference of her circular head, which is the look that we're putting on her. Now to complete that circle, we're gonna come from the base of the ear right up to the tip of the nose in a circle shape. Follow along from the base of the ear lobe to the tip of her nose creating a circular shape. Does that make sense, guys? Leave me a comment if you have any questions about the verbiage I'm choosing to use. I'm trying to explain things and keep it as simple as possible. Now let's stretch this lip out a little bit because you can see where it's uneven. So I'm gonna tidy that up, make it even. They have a little bit of a flu there and it creases and if you don't stretch it out, it will be uneven. And when your dog pants, you'll notice it. So can you see that round shape now on the side of her face? How we've rounded it up, that's what we're trying to achieve. Now we have to work on the other side. We're gonna repeat the same process. Let's take a look at this. From the base of the ear and a circular shape to the tip of the nose. Not all the way up to the tip of the nose, but you're creating an imaginary U shape there and you're following that, that's your guide when you're scissoring. I use thinning shears a lot when I groom. I use it on every dog. I'm trying to stick with my straight shears in this demo for you guys, because I realize most of you probably do not use thinning shears, and unless you're experienced, you, you really shouldn't be using thinning shears. So I'm, I'm using straight shears for the beginner or the inexperienced groomer. Notice that tongue, it's always out. The guys got to be aware of that. They will sometimes try to lick the scissors. They lick when they're nervous. They pant when they're nervous. So most of the time when you're grooming, your dog's tongue is going to be out. Some dogs have a very long tongue. They can be pretty quick with it. So be aware of that tongue and try to push it back in their mouth. At times, 
you know, I'll hold her tongue in. And we're going to tidy up that line under her jaw, make that even. Remember, you got to use your comb all the time when you're scissoring, trying to pull out loose hairs, all those stray hairs. Use that comb to pull the hair out so you know what to scissor off. Now I'm going to go for my thinning shears. I like to just tidy up those lines a little, that they don't even look like they were scissored at all. It just looks like the hair grew that way. I like to just scissor right along the edge of my scissor lines with a thinning shear, and it just makes everything look so natural. But then, like I said, guys, you can skip this step. You know, you don't have to buy thinning shears. You need a good pair if you are going to use this technique in your grooms. Uh, and they can be expensive. A good pair of thinning shears would probably start around $200. So, you know, but you don't have to have them. Trust me. I also use the comb over scissors technique that a lot of barbers use. I just kind of lift the hair with the comb and thin off anything that's screwing up the shape that I'm after, which is that circular shape. That's what we're doing with Coco today. And that's it, guys. We did it. We're done. We gave Coco her new look. Her little Shih Tzu look. She looks great. What do you think? I'd like some comments. I'd like some feedback, guys. I need feedback. I need you to tell me what you think. Do any of you have a mixed breed that you struggle to figure out what type of trim to put on the dog? Just remember, you look at their profile. You look at what breed characteristics does your dog have. And that should lead you in the right direction as far as deciding what type of trim to put on your dog. The ears should be right to the top of the shoulder blade. That gives your dog a balanced look. Symmetric. Grooming is an art and it absolutely demands balance and symmetry or it will not look good. However, this little girl, she looks great. Thank you for joining me guys. I'll see you next week.